If you've been wondering what happened to men nowadays, or why there's a scarcity of male role models, well, that's mainly because there's a scarcity of fully developed men. Uh, let me try my best to explain why. To understand this phenomena better, we will move away from humans for a bit and go to nature. In biology, there is this uh, phenomena called newtony, where an individual of a species retains juvenile traits in adulthood. An example of that is the axolotl, that cutie that never truly develops into a full salamander unless it's been forced by circumstances. And that's what it is about genetics that I hope uh, a lot of people are aware of, that genetics are going to determine a range you're going to be on. But your environment, your actions determine where you can be on that range. And that range is quite large. And that is the exciting field of epigenetics. Another fascinating example of this epigenetics in nature, it's the domesticated pig that if released back in a while, within six months, it's going to start growing bristles and tusks and the cute little pink piggy is going to turn into a full matured boar. And that's a response to the new stresses where the amygdala will now trigger all of these changes that result in increases in testosterone and therefore the development of the pig into the boar. And that's where we see the lowering of testosterone in the male population, especially in the West, as a result really of domestication because when there is no stress and it's only comfort there's no real challenge there is no necessity to fully develop past this juvenile stage you heard that the average man nowadays has a lower level of testosterone and it is a result of our environment similar to the domesticated pig unless put into an environment where you're going to have these triggers to fully develop, you are not going to get the testosterone necessary to do so. And it might sound like a good thing because there's a lot of misrepresentation of testosterone that people think that is about aggression and, you know, just muscles and beards. But really, it is way more complex than that and it's linked with drive in men and women as women also have testosterone and in men and women you'll find that testosterone is a driver to find a mate the driver for hard work in general because mainly the role of testosterone is to make hard work feel good and if it's possible to make matters even worse this forced domestication of men does not just result in a population of juvenile individual engaging in juvenile behaviors and lacking drive and with the scarcity of fully developed males that can provide guidance you're also creating a dangerous environment for women and we can see another example of this in nature in our cousins the orangutans where you're going to see the distinction between the fully developed males as they will have phalanges as a result of this increased level of testosterone and the rest of the males despite them being adult looking similar or really the same with females and those physically underdeveloped males approach to reproduction it's rape and that's not something that happens if the fully uh, developed males are around. And this is the behavior that tracks in humans too, that most of the sexual offenses and violence offenses towards women from males come from males that have been raised in single family households. That's why I don't think it's a coincidence that we see across history, across multiple cultures from all over the world, that it was a ritual of passage of turning boys into men. And that involves high stress and challenges, physical and mental, that triggered this adaptation to create men. And in this modern world, especially in the West, that has become increasingly feminized and comfortable, now we are creating a population of juvenile, underdeveloped uh, men that have no drive and become very volatile and potentially dangerous. 
like it or not, men and women are not the same. And that's a good thing because in our differences lies our strengths. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have equal opportunities. That's something we should always fight for. But we also need to not erase millions of years of evolution and those very important genetic and biological differences that we can enable the best outcome. We have to drop the ego and acknowledge that boys have different requirements for their development and it's not this forced domestication that obviously results in weak, sick, juvenile individuals that tend to be dangerous for women as well and really make the world a harder place to live in. Just something to consider. Protect your peace.